Well, this is uh, Adam here uh, with the Here to Listen podcast, uh, another little mini episode that we're doing as part of our NCS uh, community awareness. Um, as some of you may know, that the community awareness days are not taking place. So what we thought we would do is do um, a little one shot with each of the organisations that were booked on. So you can find out about what's available in our community and the good work that's being done. Um, I'm here with Richard, um, who's with uh, the forum, um, Busy Getting Stronger. Um, it's a great tagline as well. It's something that attracted me to the organisation to start with because I'm a big proponent of taking action uh, to counter any uh, issues that we've got with mental health, which I've definitely experienced. It's no good sitting you know, in your bed with the covers over you, which has always been a temptation for me sometimes when I'm troubled. But you you, you know, you do something, even if it's just one little thing a day, you know, progress. I'm, I'm big on that myself. But yeah, I'll, I'll bring you in now, Richard. Thank you. And yeah, tell us about the organisation. Thanks. Lovely, thank you. Um, yeah, so we're a small organisation based in Flitting. We're raising awareness of young people mental health, but also for families and for schools in our area. And we've been going since 2015, after two of us lost family members to suicide. One of those was Lizzie Barnes, who died in 2012, and the other was our daughter, Becky Luscombe, who died in 2014. Lizzie had been a student at Harlington Upper. Becky had been at Redbourne Upper in Amptill, and both had gone to uni but both died in their early 20s while they were still students. Now, while I'm sitting here, um, I can introduce my friend. You may probably be wondering how a large plastic duck comes into this. This is Trevor. He's the largest of a huge family of ducks collected by Becky, and she used the Twitter handle at Duck Beaky, and she became a national campaigner for better recognition of mental health. She worked alongside two national charities, one called Mind, the other called Time to Change. And so for me and for uh, our family, at least, Trevor is a reminder to carry on what Becky started. I'm curious about, um, obviously, lots of tragedy around that time, but there are some people that would have that tragedy and kind of just sort of go along with their lives and not choose to do, you know, not set up a forum. You know, what was the decisions around the creation of this movement? Okay. Um, so certainly Becky's campaigning was one of the stimuluses, stimuli behind it, but also the uh, both of the funeral services, and this is the crux really, both of the funeral services were conducted by uh, a vicar who until quite recently had been the head of sixth form at Harlington Upper School where he'd been in that role for about 25 years. And so he was very, very conscious of the needs of young people. And he had conducted, he felt, one too many funerals of young people who had died through unexplained deaths or through suicide. And he really wanted to do something about it. And at the funeral, there were two representatives from the Mind Head Office in London. He got chatting to them. He put them in touch with uh, the local Mind Office. And with their help, that's how we got started. And then we drew other people in as as we went and we got the interest of schools. So that was the that was the motive behind it. And to be honest with you, um, everybody reacts in a different way to those kind of deaths. But for us, I think just doing something positive has been brilliant therapy. Mm. I imagine you've connected with a lot of people as a result of the forums as well. And um, maybe you can say a little bit about like I understand the work that you do in the background of connecting of linking that sort of thing and yes. normally I'd ask organizations about your service users and the people that access you know do, do you have a sort of a version of that with what you do um, I understand not service users necessarily no. but you know no. yours you know the service sort of as for want of a better word that you kind of offer yeah. perhaps absolutely yeah so the I suppose you could look at our work in, in, in two different ways. One, one is that we, we work with uh, all sorts of different organisations. We really, I suppose you could say, we like to be a bit of a hub where if anybody comes to us and says, look, we've got an issue or we'd like to know something about this kind of mental health issue, then we can say, look, there's, there's this organisation or that organisation we can pass you on to. So, I mean, uh, as you mentioned, we, we've had contact with you almost since uh, the very beginning of the organisation in 2015. We've got members who work with Mind BLMK. They're very busy at the moment because of coronavirus, uh, handling phone calls. They particularly deal with adults. 
Uh, there's people like myself and uh, other members of the committee who work with CHUMS, which is there to support young people's mental well-being and also if there's been a bereavement in the family. Uh, and uh, another one, which is a national group called Papyrus, which is there for, for prevention of young suicide. So we work with them and, and lots of other people um, and we, we promote what they do and they're very kind at promoting what we do. But then when it comes to the actual people we, we want to help, then they can be families, families who are having real struggles because they've got a young person in their family who is finding it so hard that the parents themselves feel bewildered and don't know what to do. So we try and point them on to support um, the students themselves and, and also school staff. And we've done a, a little bit of work with them on training days as well. So it's a whole mixture of people. And not forgetting the events. Can you say a little bit about the events that you run? Yep. Um, so the, the events are the main part of what we do. And it's really how we got the name, the forum to begin with, because the forum is a meeting place. Uh, and for us, it's really important that we get people together. And so until coronavirus changed things, we were holding meetings every six months, switching between Redbourne Upper and Harlington Upper. And each time we chose a different topic and we invited all those people we've talked about, so young people, families and schools, we'd have speakers, plenty of time for coffee and chat, and displays from all those, all sorts of other organisations that help with, with well-being. Um, we have regular groups of young people, people such as, as Youth Voice, Young Health Watch, we have a youth club, students from our, our hosting schools, and they give us fresh ideas, which everyone really appreciates. Um, saying that as well, at the end of this podcast, I have a, a big request to make of some young people, which I know they'll be just great at. And then the subjects we talk about at our forums have included self-harm, anxiety, eating and mental health, suicide and social media. Social media was a really big one. I remember that event. We had um, a fellow from Bedfordshire Police who came and spoke and he really opened the eyes of parents to the kind of things which are out there which can cause problems. But of course, social media can also be a great thing too. Let's not forget that. And each time we'd welcome 80 to 100 people. And for quite a lot of them, it was the first time they'd had a chance to talk about these issues in a safe space. So that's that's a lot of what we do. Mm. Did you have um, events planned coming up? Did you have certain subjects that you were looking to cover in the yep. future? Uh, mm -hmm. We've got the, the, the one which we were due to have had, which would have been in April, was um, we were having a repeat of a session we did about four years ago on eating and mental health. And we were going to talk about just the basics of eating for, for being healthy. But then somebody was going to come along um, to talk about eating disorder and, and his experience. And that was quite unusual because so many people think that eating disorder is for is something that affects young women. And this time this was a young man who was going to speak. And we're very conscious, I suppose, that um, that young men and men generally sometimes get left out of the discussion about mental health. And we really want to to raise that profile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And obviously with Corona that, that got put put away, had you got any plans for the following six months or do you not think that far ahead? Or Oh no, we, 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 try, <laughs> we do try and to think sort of six months further ahead. Uh, it's very likely that there, there are two issues that we'd like to look at in future. One is to do with uh, social media. I think we need to come back to that one again because so many things have changed. Uh, but also looking at the positive side of it and uh, things such as apps and how they can help with people's well-being. So that's two things definitely for the future. Yeah, it's, it's something that I've definitely been aware of recently is uh, that just the power, but the power either side, you know, the power of um, social media to support and engage and then the power to kind of do damage. And it's almost like you can't have one without the other that I've seen. Um, I'm using social media now technically with yourself that I've never used before since the uh, coronavirus hit. So yeah. I've definitely valued it. I've valued it in my personal life. Um, I'm into modern board games. So there's various platforms that have sort of sprung up as a result of that. So there's a, a connectivity that I've had that I didn't, I wouldn't say didn't have before. I did have physically, but in the absence of that, I've got something that's quite near to it. So yeah, yeah I do. I can't, I do wonder like with young people, how they're doing, you know, as, as, as an adult, there's certain things that I've got sort of access to or aware of, and there might be a bunch of things that young people use that I've never even heard of that might support them as well. I don't know if you're aware of any. 
there are a whole range of apps that people can use. Um, what I can do, maybe if it helps to go along with this uh, with this podcast, I can supply a whole list of those and they can be made available to people. Uh, that could be quite useful for them. But I think yeah. there's, 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 there's the good and the bad sides of social media. And I think one of the things that I've noticed, um, I, I'd love getting out to meet people. And I like meeting real three-dimensional people. And at the moment, we're living in a kind of, I don't know, two-dimensional world where we're seeing people on screens and it's never quite the same. And I also get that feeling as well that there are times when you've just got to remind yourself to switch that off. Otherwise, that computer screen, that phone screen will never leave you alone. And I think that can become a bit of a stress in itself. Because in normal life, you go out and meet people and then you take time and you're on your own. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, just to wrap up a little, I'm going to start wrapping up. But I've got a couple of things I want to cover. So the first, yeah. well, three things, actually, because you wanted to bring something in as well. Okay. So the first one was about how through the prism of the NCS program itself, where we're going to have groups of young people in isolation or not, but probably isolation that um, are looking to do social action, to do social action projects within their groups. How yes. do you think the young people can help you as an organisation with their social action? Mm hmm. Um, well, if if now is the right time for me to say something, I'd, I'd like to um, invite young people to do a little project with us, because as I was saying earlier on, I'm very conscious of the number of apps which are out there at the moment. And one of the ways that people can engage with improving their mental health, if they particularly if they're very private about it, they don't want to disclose things actually having an app where you can sort out your problem confidentially is a really good idea. So we've got a list of about 30 apps. They're all safe. They're all recommended by people such as the National Health Service and so on. And we would love to invite some young people to actually road test them for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can promote them with, with their recommendation on our social media. That is a great idea. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that I think people would be interested in doing. Um, the, a lot of them, are, a lot of them, if not all of them, are free. So there's that aspect of like, there's no real commitment involved. You're just going to try it out and then give feedback, perhaps to yourself about what their experience was of the app. And then I'd guess you'd, you kind of be able to look at those 30. There's probably good ones, there's bad ones, or there's ones that are more suitable for this or more for that. And yes. you almost form information and recommendations from that research. It's like research, isn't it? I, I like that idea. That's great. Yeah. Now that would that would really help us, and of course it's something you can do from the comfort of your own home as well. So it's it's all achievable. Yeah, um, I could I could get the list off you, but I was thinking maybe the best way to do it is if young people did want to work with you, would you be happy being the single point of contact? Would you have yeah. be happy with the phone number, with the email? Would that work for you? Yeah, certainly all all the all the contact details. Yeah, um, and however they'd like to get in touch, more than happy. And I've got those from you and I'll put those in the comments of the YouTube channel if they want to approach you with the with the to, to join you on that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I wanted to finish with um, is I was wondering how your own knowledge of mental health has expanded and how you have evolved during the time that the, the forum has existed. Oh, it's it's changed completely. Um, I think there are things when I look look at my own life. I think there are things which were going on, which if I really stopped to think were probably mental health issues to some extent. And, and I think we all do this. We think, oh, well, this is just normal. You know, other people are probably feeling exactly the same. You know, I shouldn't be, be making a fuss about it. Um, I was uh, before I, I, I took early retirement after Becky died um, and I just had to look for other kinds of work. But up to that point, I'd been a, a primary teacher. And that is a really stressful job. And I was suffering a lot from anxiety, but I just don't think I really acknowledge that. Now I look at it and think, if I'd really thought about it, I should have thought about the strategies I could have helped to do something about it. Um, and, you know, we, we've all got mental health, but that doesn't mean we've all got mental illness. Um, but I just think if we're all a little bit more aware, um, we can find simple ways of helping us with those things. Sometimes they're very low level things like saying, OK, I've had enough on the computer. I'm going out for a walk or whatever it is you can do safely, social distance wise. Um, and also, I think I've just become much more aware of 
what you call the triggers, the kind of things that can make people um, have a downturn in their mental health or perhaps even go so far as to feel suicidal. Uh, and that really does concern me. And I'd have to say, particularly with coronavirus at the moment, I think we're all of us in every single mental health organisation, we're looking out for people because either now or further down the line, what's happening now with people's homes or jobs or education might have an impact on their mental health. And so we want to try and help them where they are right now. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, a great way to finish, I think, Richard. Um, so I'm going to wrap up now. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, and uh, I hope to see you in person in the very near future, as near as it will allow. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care.